So, I have been making videos about video games for a couple months now, but I just realized that I have never really made a video about what really made me a gamer that I am today. So, for this video, I want to talk about the top games that really stick out to me and what made me a gamer, like what really drove me to love video games, like what type of series they were, what genre of games they were. And uh, yeah, I hope you find this interesting because it's really made me have my love for games and what they stand for to this day. So. Let's get right into it. The gaming system that started my love of video games was the Nintendo 64. As you can see by my shirt, I'm wearing the logo and everything. But the first game that I played on Nintendo 64 that would launch my love of this series was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This game was just awesome. Not only was it Nintendo's first 3D Zelda game, but just starting out in the game was so cool. Starting out in Kokiri Forest, uh, being able to explore the shops and going into the Lost Woods and following the music to get to different locations in the Lost Woods, going into Kokiri's houses. It was awesome. Plus, he got that one douchebag Mido who won't let you go see the Great Deku Tree unless you have a shield and sword. But after that, once you go into the first dungeon of the game, the Great Deku Tree, it is really cool. Like, you definitely feel like you're inside a tree. All the vines and the enemies in this game, how woodland it feels. The dungeon itself is really fun. Plus, the boss really is unforgettable. First of all, you're in this dark, smoky area chamber sealed off by a giant stone door. And then the boss, Queen Goma, once you make eye contact her and she falls from the ceiling, she's like this giant armored spider arachnid that, man... <laughs> it freaked me out as a kid. It would still freak me out to this day. If you saw that thing, like, I'll go to Australia or anything, and you see, uh, like, Queen Goma, that would... I hate spiders, so that would scare me so much. But that boss fight is so much fun. Stunning her, and then just slashing up that eyeball, killing her little kids, and slashing up the eyeball until you finally destroy Queen Goma and cure the Great Deku Tree of his curse. Uh, it is such a great uh, way to start Link's journey off by sending him out into Hyrule. Uh, it was an amazing start to the game, and I loved that start. Ocarina of Time was just great. I guess the main reason why I love Ocarina of Time so much is that it doesn't deal with the fact that Link's an adult in this game. Like, the whole thing deals with time travel, but at the start of the game, Link's just a normal eight to nine year old kid and uh, you get to explore Hyrule being sent on this quest by Princess Zelda to stop Ganondorf exploring Hyrule. What I think was really cool is the second dungeon as the kid meeting the Dodongos or Gorons and then they give you that power bracelet which you use to get into Dodongo's cavern which if I'm going to be honest, Dodongo's Cavern wasn't my favorite dungeon. Yeah, it's cool to fight the Dodongos. That giant Dodongo's head is pretty cool, like at the start of the dungeon. But the only fun bit of that dungeon really was fighting King Dodongo, which... Is kind of a really easy fight, just throwing bombs in his mouth until he is beaten, and then he rolls in the lava, you get a heart container, and he gets to be sworn brothers with the king of the Gorons. It's a really cool experience in that game, but just not my favorite dungeon. However, I still think it was really fun. 
Okay, the third area though, this is where the game really does get annoying for me. Like, forever Ocarina of Time will be in the top three spot in my favorite Zelda games of all time. But the whole Jabu Jabu's Belly Dungeon, that was just weird. I know a lot of people don't like it, mainly because it's just Princess Rudo is a bitch the whole time, making you carry her, and even if you leave her in water for some point, some points, like, she'll vanish, and, like, she'll just chastise you, like, Oh, if you're such a man, you left me behind. Why, how could you do that? I'm just a little girl. She's just a bitch the whole time you're in Jabu Jabu's belly. And it's a weird dungeon too. Like there's points where the like there's some enemies that hang from the ceiling that you gotta fight with the boomerang. They're really weird. They're like tentacle things. There's weird electric ales through different chambers of the dungeon. There's jellyfish. There's little holes you can fall down. It's a uh, it's an interesting dungeon. I mean, you can hear, like, Jabu Jabu's belly, like, it'll churn and stuff, which can make it feel like you're really inside Jabu Jabu. But it's by far my least favorite dungeon. The mini-boss and boss, both of those were just stupid anyway. The mini-boss is a giant octo, which isn't fun to fight, never liked him as a fight. I never liked fighting the full, the main boss either, Baronade. I thought he was just a headache to fight. He wasn't fun. It's just destroy the jellyfish and slash him up. I felt like he was one of the main bosses of the game where I felt like uh, if you defeated him, it didn't matter if you defeated him or not. But still... I would say that it was probably a good experience to have in this game just because it was Zelda's first try at a water temple playing as a kid. So, gotta give it props to them. I think the main reason a lot of people love Ocarina of Time, myself included, is the time travel. I mean, after you got the three spiritual stones, you got the... Uh, green stone from the Deku tree, you got the red stone from the Gorons, you got the blue stone from the Zoras, and then you use that to open the Chamber of Time, and you pull the Master Sword out, and you become Adult Link, which is awesome. But that's when you get to travel to the Spirit, the, uh, not Spirit Temple, the Forest Temple, which is awesome. I mean, I love the music to this. Uh, Forest Temple itself. I love the decor, how like ancient and kind of run down it is. Vines are growing everywhere. Uh, how vegetation it feels. It feels like haunted forests. It's really cool. Just Des destroying the pose. It's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. You fighting fan in Ganondorf. That was a really fun one. But, yeah, that's definitely, the Forest Temple playing as Adult Link was really fun. But I would have to say my favorite temple as Adult Link would be the Spirit Temple. How just ancient it feels that you really get to use the back and forth time travel thing to get through the Spirit Temple is really fun. Plus, in this game, we're introduced to the sexy boss, Twin Rova. I mean, come on. I can't be the only one <laughs> that thought Twin Rova was sexy. Also, Ocarina has to have one of the best Ganondorf fights. I mean, he he has that first stage where you're knocking the lightning ball back and forth against him. Once the lightning hits him, you shoot him with the light arrow. The light pierces his body. He falls down. Link jumps over and slashes Ganondorf up. And then there's that second phase where Ganondorf is trying to destroy you and Zelda by crushing the castle on top of you. So it's all like Metroid style when you and Zelda are escaping the castle. That was really cool. 
And then once you get outside of the castle, you get the final stage of the fight where you're fighting Ganon, like the pig form of Ganondorf. Just that entire experience of Ganondorf boss battle, it's like, it's the final battle and the game lets you know that. This fight is total a total 10 out of 10 and excitement it causes. Plus, the party at the end, at the ending credits, is really fun to watch. It's just a really fun game. I mean, each boss in the game is super fun, like Volvagia from the Fire Temple, Bongo Bongo's really fun from the Shadow Temple, Twin Rova from the Spirit Temple. It's just a super fun game, and that really grew my love for The Legend of Zelda. Next game that really interested me in gaming was Mario 64. And if I'm going to be honest, I don't like Mario that much. <laughs> Mario has never been my favorite. He's alright. I mean, I played Mario Odyssey, that one was okay. I thought it was really fun at the end to be able to take control of Bowser and to be able to uh, get back to the moon, but, like, it just feels so repetitive. Like, I like that there were, like, you can go 2D and take control of things in Mario Odyssey, but it felt like the same formula through every game. And, uh, the one that I really do like, like, if I had to get rid of every Mario game and ex except for one, I would probably choose to keep Super Mario Galaxy, because that felt different. I mean, you got a new princess, you got Princess Rosalina, you got the Star Children, you have Mario flying through space with a new spin attack, and you got him going through different galaxies, uh, and each time there's comets that can make the levels harder, faster, uh, or easier. Uh, it just felt very different to the Mario formula. That's why I like Mario Galaxy so much. But, I'm going to be talking about Super Mario 64, because that's the game that got me interested in the Mario series. I like the way that Nintendo started off this game, like, how they introduced Mario was that Princess Peach had baked a cake for him, and that brings him to her castle. That's how the journey starts off. I thought it was awesome, though, getting inside the castle, and it's really cool to be able to go up to these paintings, and as they have the rippling effect, you jump in them. Like, the bob on Battlefield probably has to be one of my favorite areas of the game. Like, it's so cool to, when you're on that one island, to be able to fly through those rings of coins, or to be able to climb up to the top of the mountain on bon bon Battlefield, and to be able to defeat, uh, fight King bob -omb. That was really fun. It was, it wasn't interesting experience to play Mario, just because honestly, I didn't expect anything to happen in that game. Like, Womp's Fortress, it was fun to be able to run away from these bricks that were, that would just like, jump flat on their faces as they tried to squish you, and Mario would just butt slam them and blow them up. It, <laughs> that part made me laugh. I am doing it. Mario 64 did have its fun bits. And it was just fun to be able to travel through the castle, unlocking each area's like the different floors of the castle, and just to see different areas where you could go throughout this game. I do like that this game had a variety of bosses. Not very many. I think there were only like uh, four different bosses besides Bowser. Like, Bowser is uh, the main boss three times. The first one, he's Bowser in the Dark World, which is really easy. The second one is Bowser in Lava Land, which is probably my favorite Bowser fight, just because he can go invisible, and when he jumps, he'll tilt the platform so you can slide into the lava, and if you do, you can't get back up. 
And then you got the third Bowser, which is the Rainbow Bowser. And uh, once you blast, he got blast him three times. Once you blast him twice, the area will turn into a star. It gets a lot harder. Plus, you got Mario, once you grab him by the tail and throw Bowser off the arena and not to a bomb. Everyone says he says, so long, gay Bowser. But I swear he says, so long, King Bowsie. Let's play that role. Let's see what he says. So long, gay Bowser. Okay, I... I honestly don't know anymore. <laughs> he might say, so long, gay Bowsie. I don't know. Anyway, I love how the level difficulty increases in this game. I mean, you got the main floor where some of the levels can be a bit difficult. I mean, the Great Penguin Race is kind of a pain in the ass because the penguin cheats. It tries to push Mario off. He can't take the shortcut like uh, Mario does in the first level of that slide. But it's not too bad. And then you got that creepy eel from Jolly Roger Bay, which gave a lot of people nightmares, I think. Oh, hell no! With the basement, you got the lethal lava land where you get a bull, uh, boil the bullies. I didn't like the bullies at all. It was so rewarding to boil them up. And then you got the Hazy Maze Cave, where there was that giant sea monster floating in the basement, where you could ground pound it. I felt so bad ground pounding it, because it sounded like it let out a squeal of pain when it happened. But it was something you had to do. And then you got my favorite, one of my favorite stages of the game, the Boo area. Like, the haunted house area. The only area that was really hard to start to get in that one was Big Boo's balcony. You had to learn the flip kick. You had to time it perfectly. And if you got knocked off, you had to run to the top of the balcony again. And Boo is big. So you gotta beat him without falling off. And then the star is somewhere else really hard to get to. That level is just a pain in the ass, but it's still really fun. I did hate the clock and the rainbow ride. Those two were the hardest. Like, they're on the fourth level, and man, they were the hardest. Like, you almost had to be experts to do it. Like, every time you dropped in the clock, what time did the hand pointed to, it would like, make time stand still, go really slow, or speed fast up. And there were levels that just seemed impossible. Like, get the eight red coins, or get to the top of the clock while maneuvering all these obstacles. Like, a thwomp you gotta, um, be able to jump on while it, so it can take you to the top of the star. It was hard. And Rainbow Ride has its own difficult things like completely riding the entire rainbow. That was hard. So getting the 100 coins on those two areas was really hard. I did it, but it was like 10 years after I first started this game. So, yeah, good luck getting 120 stars because... Getting a hundred coins on those two levels, it can make you really frustrated. I was looking at a lot of game overs when I was trying to get the hundred coins. So, I really just loved Mario 64 from the diversity. You can be in a fire world, you can be going through a desert, you can be in a dry wet world, you can find an under underwater city with the dry wet world. There are so many bosses, you can climb a mountain. The variety of bosses is awesome with the Boos, the Irog, the King Babom, and then the Bowsers. I get harder and harder every time. Just the diversity of the levels in this game is what really made me love Mario games. Like, I wish they would do something like that with another Mario game, because that was really fun. But yeah.
That's the reason why I love Super Mario 64. So diverse. And I still love it to this day. Lastly, I want to talk about a video game that got me into the video game series. No, it's not Mario Kart, even though I loved Mario Kart 64 and all the Mario Karts that have come after that. What I'm talking about is Diddy Kong Racing. This game was just so much fun. The reason that I loved Diddy Kong Racing is that it felt not like your average Nintendo 64 racing game, if you know what I mean. Like, Mario, Mario Kart, like, you have choose your character, choose the course you want to do. But with this game, you have the character selection, selection, which is a lot of cute animals like Conker, Timber, Crunch, Banjo, Diddy Kong, a lot of cute animals. And just after that, you can choose to explore the world in adventure mode. It's so cool to explore this island that has all these hidden racetracks in them. Find these areas that have like six racetracks, which can be done in the air, uh, in the water, or just on land. It was awesome to choose your vehicle and what to race in. That was something I loved about it. I just love the elephants in this game too, like, uh, he's a little el blue elephant that walks around the island just humming the game's theme to himself, and he sounds exactly like Homer Simpson. Like, you can, uh, go onto this one center piece that has his face on it, and you honk your horn and he'll show up, and he's like, Hello, friend. And he sounds exactly like over, which is really funny. Believe it or not, this was a racing game that actually had bosses in it. Like, I don't think Mario Kart had bosses, but this game did. And they are hard. Like, the very first boss is a Triceratops that you race to the top of a mountain. There's another octopus one that's really hard that you race in the water. Of uh, it, but it's super fun. These bosses, you can find ways to uh, fight against the bosses. Like, you blast the Triceratops, and once you do, it'll go like, ow! <laughs> and then you can pass him and drive up to the top of the mountain. They're hard races. Like, they do, this game does not take it easy on you. Plus, there's like a silver challenge, silver coin challenge that. Uh, you get a balloon. The balloons are used to progress through the game. Like, unlock different areas throughout the game to race. And, um, yeah, these, the silver challenge coins are really hard. Because you've got to be good at the game to collect all the coins and finish first. Because it does not make it easy. It's a challenge, but at the same time, it is super fun. But besides that... I love the multiplayer, like, you can, once you unlock these different areas, there's one called, like, Hot Tub Volcano, where you race against other players to collect these eggs that form in the lava, and, uh, you just drop them in front of your picture, you can steal them from other players, to, and once you get three eggs hatched, then you win that match. There's also one where it's like a pyramid that you drive around and try to shoot other players. There's also Darkwater Beach, which is my favorite area. It's in a hovercraft, which is hard, but you shoot other players in that one. It is super fun. Just Diddy Kong Racing was probably one of the funnest racing games I played, just because it was so different from any other racing game I played before. And I loved it. It was just, it was perfect. A perfect racing game, I think. Alright guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you found this interesting, what games actually made me a gamer, why I love them so much, why I'm actually really passionate about video games back then, and I'm so passionate about them, them, why I'm passionate, yeah, why I'm passionate about them today. Anyway guys, I hope you liked it.
Uh, if you made it this far, please give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment of what you thought of this video, what your favorite video game was that made you a gamer, and please subscribe if you liked it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.